thank you for joining us. My name's Diane Stratton. I'm the project manager for Rough River Lake for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The video you're fixing to see is going to help you understand why we discharge water the way we discharge water out of Rough River Lake. Um, if you follow us on Facebook, a lot of you have had questions or you've seen questions about why are we not releasing more water? especially this past spring. So hopefully after listening to our downstream constituents and our upstream constituents, as well as our water management, you're gonna have a better understanding of why we do what we do. And if you still have questions after seeing this video, please give us a call at the Rough River Lake Project Office at 270-257-2061. Thank you and enjoy the video. Good morning folks, my name is Adam Conley and I'm the water management team lead for the Louisville District Corps of Engineers and today I'm here at the gauge on Rough River that we use to, to regulate the water coming out of Rough River Dam. And so I wanted to share a little bit with you all about how we look at that and, and what we consider in terms of making the release decisions coming out of the dam. So this stream gauge here is uh, the gauge just above Dundee and this gauge measures the water level in the Rough River. And the water level allows us to determine how much flow is coming down the river and how much flow to let out of the dam. So this is one of four gauges we use to determine how much water we are going to release out of Rough River Lake. So the other two are on the Green River, which is further downstream, and then there's one on the Ohio River. So when there's high flood levels because of rain that has moved through the area, uh, we make sure that we continue to release a minimal amount of water out of the lake to not make the flooding worse. And so at this particular gauge, uh, the, the amount of water that we release depends on how high the river level is. And so during the summertime when there are crops in the field and uh, there's, there's more concerns with having low water levels, we target a stage of 15 feet. So what that means is we, we try not to release any more water out of Rough River Lake than would cause this gauge to rise to 15 feet. In the winter time, we have a little bit more latitude because there's not crops in the field and there are uh, a little bit more floodplain to work with. And so we target a stage of, of 22 feet. So we can let the water get a little bit higher and, and we try not to exceed those particular stages. Uh, and again, that's dependent upon the time of year. So one thing that's interesting about this gauge, it's pretty far downstream from Rough River Dam which means there's a lot of additional water that can enter in the Rough River, uh, regardless of what we're letting out of the Rough River Lake. So just for perspective, there is about 300 square miles of drainage area that come to this gauge uh, that's between the dam and this particular station. So that's 300 square miles of, of water and runoff that can get into Rough River. And that can cause the gauge to get pretty high and the river levels to get pretty high even when we're not letting much water out of Rough River Lake. So we try to be cognizant of that and understand that as rain is going to move through the area, we reduce the release coming out of Rough River Lake to a minimal amount. And we make sure that this downstream gauge doesn't exceed our target. And then after the rain has moved through and the lake is filled up, you know, we open up slowly to make sure that we're not making any flooding downstream worse and that we stay within the targets. So as part of the operation of Rough River Dam, we have to understand what the water levels are both upstream and downstream. And this particular gauge uh, measures the water level here just above the city of Dundee on the Rough River. And so we have many gauges throughout the Louisville District Corps of Engineers that we use to determine how to operate the dams and we have a partnership with the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, to make sure those gauges are operated and maintained correctly. And so that's critical to making sure that we operate the dams appropriately and correctly, depending on the downstream water levels and the incoming rain and the potential forecast and potential for flooding. So over the last couple of years, there has been quite a few rain events and storm events that have moved through this area that have dropped a tremendous amount of rain on this drainage area between Rough River Dam and this gauge. And, and what that does, it causes the river level to rise and rise fairly rapidly, usually within a day or so. And, and that happens uh, even if we're letting out a minimal amount of water from Rough River Lake. So, you know, there, there's a certain amount of drainage area that 
we can control, which is above the dam. But for everything that's coming in downstream of the dam, uh, you know, we make sure we have a minimal amount of water coming from out of the dam and then whatever Mother Nature wants to bring and, um, you know, cause the river level to come up, you know, that, that has to be what it has to be. So in the last um, two or three years, you know, we've, we've hit some pretty high flood stages. I think last year we hit maybe 28 feet and the year before that maybe 29 or almost 30 feet. And so, you know, that, that looks like a lot of flooding and I just want to let everybody know that, you know, when that happens, we, we do plan for the rain coming in and, and we make sure that we stay closed down to let all the water recede and move on downstream before we start releasing any from the dam. So in addition to flooding on the Rough River, you know, the Rough River Dam is one of four projects in the Green River Basin that help control uh, the flood levels in the Green River, which is further downstream and even to some extent the Ohio River. And so uh, when, when water is released from Rough River Dam, it takes about a day to make it from the dam to this gauge. And then there's another gauge further downstream at Hartford. It takes about another day, so a total of, of two days. So when we're releasing water, you know, a lot of times we'll see the gauge fall here, the stage fall here, but at the same time, it'll start rising at Hartford, which is further downstream. So that's part of the reason we uh, make release decisions when we do is to account for the, the travel time between the dam and here. And then there are also control stations on the Green River that we watch. As I mentioned, you know, there's floods that happen on the Green, and since Rough River is the furthest downstream, a lot of times it has the, the longest amount of time it has to hold water back before it can start letting water out. So as the Green River water levels come up, you know, Rough River will continue to hold water back for both here and Green River. And as everything recedes and moves on down to the Ohio, that's when we'll be able to start letting water out of the dam. Uh, my name is Darren Luttrell. I'm the owner of Luttrell Farms uh, in Dundee, Kentucky. Uh, we farm about 4,000 acres of row crops. Uh, the biggest impact we have when, when um, we have a large discharge or a large amount of rain in this area, when we see the gauge get to anything above 15 feet here at the Dundee gauge, then we have, we're starting to see issues with our drainage. When we get above 18, our tiles aren't working at all, our ditches are full. Anything above 21, we've got water out in the fields. Our relationship with the Corps of Engineers at, at Rough River Project is, uh, has been really good the past, I would say, 15 to 20 years. So we've been able to uh, coordinate and communicate with them. We realize that there are issues above the dam. Uh, we just want people to realize there are issues below the dam. And this is our livelihood. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of acres in the Rough River drainage area that, that is impacted. Uh, in our 4,000 acre operation, every bit of it is impacted by Rough River. And so the, uh, the flood stage of uh, 25, I believe it is, we've got roads closed, we've got fields underwater, three to four foot of water. Uh, this past year in 2021, uh, we, we lost 1,500 acres of row crop that had just been planted uh, and to a, to a major rain event. So being in constant contact with the Corps uh, has really helped us to help each other, I guess you would say. Uh, we, we work together quite well, and I think that's fairly unusual for some, some districts, but uh, we, we've been able to make that work really well. For example, in 2011, when we had a major rain event in early spring, obviously our, plant, our uh, crops weren't planted at that time, but when we had a major rain event here and above the dam, uh, we stayed in constant phone contact with uh, folks in Louisville and at the dam to kind of coordinate the release. Obviously they had uh, as full as they've ever been, I guess, and uh, we're releasing as much as they could, as quickly as they could. And, but when it came time for us to start planting, they were able to hold back enough that to at least let us get our crops planted, which is the job of the dam is to, for flood control downstream. And so uh, we were able to work together. We, we stayed in contact 
more than any of us would have liked, but uh, we worked through it and we realized that they have a job to do upstream just like they have a job to do downstream. And so we, we really like to work together. It, it makes life a lot easier on everyone. Charlie Corbett, president, friends of Rough River Lake, past president of the Home Builders Association of Kentucky. Uh, Rough River Lake was established in the early 1960s, and my earliest recollection was camping right over here at the Lower Branch Campground with our family, and I've been on this lake since about 1965. Uh, the economic viability of this entire area is dependent on the expert management of the water resource by the Corps of Engineers. With uh, four campgrounds, uh, five restaurants, a Rough River State Park resort, and an airport, a PGA golf course right over here at Green Farm Resort. Roughly 150 subdivisions around the lake with lots of lakefront property and lakefront homes. Uh, the, the resource management of this lake, is, like I said, is absolutely critical uh, to the vitality of our economy here. Uh, of course, during the, the, the winter months, we are drawn down to winter pool, which drops our elevation about 20, 25 feet, depending on rainfall. And then usually we're back up at summer pool around mid-April or so, early May. That, and that is coincident and perfect alignment with our camping season for folks to come visit and uh, uh, for tourists and for uh, lakefront property owners who are here seasonally. It's a, it's a fantastic resource and we couldn't do without it here. So the great feature of Rift River Lake with its 5,000 miles of shoreline is that it attracts visitors and tourists alike year round. Uh, roughly around 1.2 million visitors per year in this rural lake area because of this lake. Hello again. I hope you've enjoyed the video and have learned a little bit about how we manage the water at Rough River Lake. If you still have questions after watching this video, again, please give us a call at the Rough River Lake Project Office at 270-257 2061 and we'll be glad to answer more of your questions or you can ask us a question on our Facebook page. Thank you.